Sean Aston is here. Ah! Oh. the streamer tape. Sean, thank you so much for coming in to shoot our educational film. We are such big fans. Yeah, always happy to help astronomy. Um, listen, I, I do have a few questions about the script. Oh, great. No, save them for your memoirs. Okay, people, we are shooting in 60 seconds. No, it's, it's the topic, dead stars. I mean, for a general education film, it's a bit grisly, isn't it? Well, the public likes grisly. Quick, what's your favorite bear? Polar bear? Oh, grizzly. Grizzly. Yeah. Look, the, the script talks about how our own sun will one day swell up and consume the earth before it dies. It's a bit dark. Well, dark, but accurate. You know, questioning the script is something that an actor like Felicia Day would do. Are you going to be a Felicia Day, or are you going to be a Sean Astin? A Sean Astin? Super. I actually have a photographic memory. I mean, I could recite these lines back to you, you know, even if I were dead. What an odd turn of phrase. All right, all crew to their places. Roll camera. So I assume that special effects will be put in afterwards? No, no budget for special effects. Camera rolling. Uh, let's focus on the script. The script, Mr. Aston. You're not going to show, like, a, a, a dead star? I'm afraid answering you is not in the script. And action. You can't, I mean, you cannot cut corners here. You can't cut corners. This is, it's a show entirely about dead stars. And if there's one thing the audience will want to see, it's a dead star. Uh, early lunch. Of course, you were our first choice for this role, Sandeep. Oh, great. <laughs> I'm excited. I mean, this sounds like a lot of fun. I actually know a lot about space science, so... Then you're the perfect person for this job. In fact, uh, I don't know if you know this, but the sun, different parts of the sun, rotate at different speeds. So the equator of the sun actually rotates once about every uh, 25 days, whereas the poles rotate once every 30 days, so... I actually did know that because you are reading it from our script. Right. Okay. That's a fair point. <clears throat> but it totally sounds like something, you know, I would have known, though, right? Of course. Um, is everyone in their places? Good, 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 good. Okay, Santi, I would like to go ahead and get this in one take, all right? We're actually on a bit of a timetable here. So, uh, action. The universe is full of stars. Giant, life-giving, ball-shaped balls of energy. But what happens when they die? Hi, I'm Sean Astin. To begin, a star's life... A star's life consists of fusing uh, hydrogen into helium. Is that a ghost? You can think of hydrogen as the fuel that makes a star work. When it runs out of hydrogen, we say that the star has died. What happens next depends on how massive the star is. Of course. The falling light killed Sean, but he can't pass over to the other side because he's still under contract to us until our project's done. Must be some serious contract. <laughs> it's the same one you signed. Uh, Funky, this is perfect. Who better to talk about dead stars than a dead star? Keep rolling. When a mid-sized star begins to run out of hydrogen fuel, it becomes redder and grows incredibly large, becoming what is called a red giant. Ooh, nice artist concept. As it increases in size, Those are my lines. the star actually consumes the inner planets of its solar system before ejecting its outer layers and leaving behind its tiny core called a white dwarf. In fact, this will happen to our own sun. Scientists believe that the sun will expand and then incinerate the Earth about five billion years from now. Of course, all life will already have died off by then because, you know, the liquid water will have boiled off. So. Oh, that's fantastic, Sandy. Great delivery. Um, could you? Pan the camera, oh, uh, beautiful. Keep rolling. Oh, you guys are mean. When a star becomes a red giant, not everything in its solar system is necessarily destroyed. In fact, in 2006, NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope detected that even comets can survive this red giant phase. Uh, which means, if we want to survive our own sun's death, then we're gonna have to leave the Earth and go live on comets. Because, Comets may survive even if the Earth doesn't, so 
My idea. <laughs> Take that, NASA. Zunky. What's that? What does he have in his hand? <laughs> God, dude. Oh, I, that's my script. Come on. <laughs> okay, all right. God, seriously, what is wrong with you people? Not nice people. This red giant phase is only one possible death of a star. If it's massive enough, a star can explode into a supernova. An exploding star sounds bleak, but there's actually a positive side to this. A massive star forms heavy elements in its core. When it goes supernova, the explosion can blast those elements out into the galaxy, which can ultimately help form new planets like the Earth. In addition, the shock wave from a supernova can help trigger new star formation in interstellar dust. On the other hand, if a supernova happens too close to our own sun, its gamma rays can hit the upper atmosphere. This can cause a chain reaction that can deplete the ozone layer and allow dangerous radiation to hit our Earth. Fabulous, Sandy. Could you finish that thought on this side of the camera? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, some scientists believe this happened to the Earth about 450 million years ago, uh, wiping out about 60% of all life in the ocean. So, can you guys actually film me from back here, or is this... Oh, don't worry. Uh, this is a reverse camera. It can film both ways. Oh, it's pretty cool technology. Uh, though you are filming a lot of close-ups of this guy's eyeball. So. <laughs> hey, no worries. <laughs> I get it. I'm not the director. Uh, but I actually do direct my own web series. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> I was on set with Felicia Day. I mean, she's kind of huge. Activate the shush field. Of her. She's redheaded. Uh, it's fake. It's died. I'm kind of a comedy god. In 2006, the Spitzer Space Telescope discovered something particularly surprising. While looking at a pulsar, the remnant of an exploded star, Spitzer discovered a ring of debris around the dead star. This material was shot out during the death throes of the star and appears to be part of a new cycle of planet forming. In effect, even after a supernova, a new solar system may be rising like a phoenix from the ashes of the old. It's yet another example that even after stars die, life may continue in new and sometimes very surprising ways. And Cut! So did you, you get everything you need? I, I tried to hit all the main points of the script. I mean, I... It was perfect, Sean. This footage is so good. I don't even think we'll need to edit it. What is, what's happening to him? He completed his unfinished business. He can now pass over to the other side. Well, on a positive note, I bet there's a director that's happy she doesn't have to pay my salary now. It's amazing. The astronomical science. You take it with you. But but I'm still getting paid, right? Cuz I want money. If I Guys are mean individuals. Welcome to the world premiere of our latest NASA educational film. Woo, Sandeep, yeah. So let's go ahead and get that projector rolling. And without further ado, Spitzer Space Telescope presents Dead Stars. It, it would appear that ghosts do not actually show up on film. Does this mean that Sean Astin and I are still under contract? Uh, not nice people. 